Hey, Being at Work listeners, welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Andrea Butcher, and wow, I love this conversation today. You know, we all know that the world is becoming increasingly more connected. And today's guest says that all leaders should be able to work with anyone around the world. After all, we are all human beings. Chinzia Beretta is a multicultural global leader based in Milan, and I love her Italian accent. But what you most need to know about Chinzia is how she looks at the world through a multicultural lens. You'll hear that in her stories. At five years old on a trip to Spain, she told her mom that she wanted to learn all of the languages so that she could play with all of the kids all over the world. And today, this spirit of curiosity and learning plays out in the work that she does. Listen in as we talk about putting yourself out there and being willing to be awkward, the power of intentionality and being present in a virtual environment, and simply listening to make it safe for others to be who they are. Check it out. You highlighted something that is very much near and dear to my heart. The multicultural element has been a thread throughout my life. I've always been inspired and curious about the world, about different cultures, traveling. And uh, I started high school learning foreign languages, going abroad to study languages, to meet different cultures. I've traveled all over the world, and that has been always a passion of mine, meeting different people, getting to know them, how they live their life abroad. So throughout the years when I started to work, I spent a year in New York City working at a PR agency. That was my dream, working in the U.S. And then when I came back, I spent some time in an Italian company. And I think I continue to focus on my passion of having connection with intercultural environments on my own, going abroad again, learning languages and traveling. But then 13 years ago, I got the opportunity to get into a multicultural international company, big American company. And over the years, I expanded my scope and I have a global scope now. And that's where I had the opportunity to match my inner values, what makes me happy in the morning, which means talking to people in Asia and in the afternoon or in the evening, talking to someone in Americas or in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. So matching my personal passion with the work I do and the people I meet at work, that was something really valuable for me. And I got, as you said, my energy back throughout this journey. So this is, in summary, a little bit about myself. But I think, yes, everything started when I was five or six years old. I remember I was traveling with my parents in Spain. My parents were travelers addicted. So I traveled with them since I was a child. I remember I was not able to play with other kids because I couldn't speak their language. And my mom keeps on reminding me that I told her, oh, I want to learn all the languages in the world to play with all the kids in the world. And so since then, that has been my mission. I started Swedish, for example, last year just for fun. Don't ask me why, because there is no immediate work application for me for Swedish, but that's just fun. Oh, my goodness. At five years old, you recognized. And I love the connection to play because that's something you're five years old. So that's what's most important to you. I want to learn all the languages of the world so I can play with all these kids. And look at you today. I mean, how that's playing out in your life. Yes, that's uh, definitely has been my source of inspiration. It keeps on being my source of inspiration, connecting with people from all over the world. I think the world today is so much connected through social media, through all the online platforms that we have to connect. Even the pandemic, we know that many bad things happen throughout the COVID period, but there was a booster for developing more the online connections, helping people across the world to stay more connected. Yeah. Why do you believe it is so important to look at life through this multicultural lens? Well, I think first off, as you said earlier, I'm a big fan of diversity and inclusion, and I think it's really non-realistic 
to think that we are in our little silos, in our little bubble, wherever we are in the world, and we cannot connect or we don't have the possibilities to connect with others. It's literally impossible. We have so many influences and inputs from everywhere. Look at the TV series from many services online or the Asian culture, K-pop culture, and all these kind of things are so much rooted now in our uh, Western cultures. And so I think it's important because it opens up your mind. Connecting with different people, it opens up your mind. It makes you think that there are so many people and so many different things we don't know. And I think leaders, especially in companies, it's important to have this mindset of lifelong learners and knowing that it's impossible to know everything about anything and constantly being curious about what's out there. It gives you the opportunity to also establish better connection, meaningful human connections with people, creating a safe space for dialogues within companies. Or for example, I'm a coach as well. And when I coach, I also take into account the differences in cultures because sometimes the way you express emotions, sometimes the way you express your needs is different according to the culture. So in general, I think culture sensitivity is very important to build good and long-lasting human relationships in general. Yeah, there's so much in there. I want to break down. I want to go back to the constant curiosity about what's out there. And certainly, as you're working with diverse individuals, that's going to serve you well. I often think we get tripped up by assumptions, by labels, by what we think we know. So how do you cultivate that curious spirit and what impact does that have? I suspect you are just naturally curious. I mean, the fact that at five years old, you were saying to your mom, like, I want to learn these languages so I can play with these kids. But how do you cultivate that if that's not your typical mode? A strength, a quality that is important to cultivate is the listening skills in general, but not only listening to what a person is saying, but looking at the person as a whole, what the person is not saying, the body language is what's said between the lines. And so this is what it means to be curious, to just listen, to ask questions. I am not ashamed of asking questions to someone who is coming from a different culture. And I want to be sure that I'm not doing something wrong or I'm not offending a person. Well, I'll give you this example. In some Asian cultures, if you are in a room with different people, you'll be naturally waiting for the person with a higher status in that organization to speak first before you go, right? Or another example, different cultures express their emotions, they express their needs, use assertiveness. In some cultures, assertiveness is even considered rude. So what I'm trying to say is, it was not born without knowing all of this. I just learned it along the way, but I think it's important to not be afraid to ask questions to people. It's literally impossible to know everything and all the traditions and the way of socializing. And I think the curiosity is really listening, asking questions, listening, making sure you have understood correctly. And this is also applicable for a normal human interaction with even people from your country, from, from your own culture. And the impact, I think, is that you see the other person. The other person feels seen, feel heard. They feel safe. They can be themselves with you because there is a connection. They feel you understand them. Well, and your vulnerability, being awkward and asking questions, it takes being vulnerable, doesn't it? And open. And it's putting yourself out there. So that sends such an important message that I care and I want to see you. Exactly. Vulnerability, I think, is one of the most important messages. Not being afraid of being vulnerable, not being afraid of being you, the true you, your authentic you, not being afraid of bringing the true self at work. Because, for example, in the leadership program I run and the company I work for, 
I bring my true self. I bring my energy. I bring my enthusiasm. I'm very much people oriented. I'm a passionate Italian. So clearly emotions and passions come out of my way of doing things, of my gesture, my dialogues, my way of smiling. Even my background in the team's meeting is usually very energetic. So I think the vulnerability is really being you because we tend to protect our own core many times because at least for me, I was worried or I was afraid of being hurt or showing my true self. And then I realized that being your true self and being there for others and making them feel safe, that's what's important. And so you need to give something to get something. I don't know if you remember, but the first time that we connected over Zoom, I had prioritized a workout and I was feeling kind of sheepish about that because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not showing up as my best self because I've had a ball cap hat and had no makeup on. And you so appreciated that. You told me at some point in the conversation, I told you like, I don't normally not wear makeup and I don't normally wear ball caps for meetings like this, but I prioritized a workout this morning. I remember that, but frankly speaking, it was not the impression or the image I have about you. It's more the welcoming person. And of course, we often think the first impression is what counts. But in reality, I think it's the first impression about you internally, your values, how you show up, not physically, not your look and feel, but rather what you say, how you made the other person feel. You know, famous quote, people will forget what you said, will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And you made me feel welcome. You made me feel seen and heard. You liked my stories. So that was the most important part. Way more important than what I look like. It's who we are that shines through. That really resonates. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and I want to just go a little bit deeper into not being afraid to ask questions because I hear in that, like, be willing to be awkward and not get it right. I mean, it is, it's experimenting a bit, isn't it? A couple of weeks ago, my family traveled to Santiago, Chile, and we don't speak Spanish. My daughter, who is fluent in Spanish, was there studying. And when we were not with her, we felt, oh gosh, we were really challenged to speak the language. And what I noticed in a trying and using Google Translate, I could tell that the people so appreciated that. They appreciated our making an attempt and they then tried to help us as we put ourselves out there. Yeah, no, that's something I've lived myself. Absolutely. It's so true. I think everybody in the world, once you travel to a place that you're not familiar with, you don't speak the language well enough, people will anyway realize that you are trying to make a step towards them, towards their culture, trying to explore their culture. It's natural. Even here in Italy, I see when we have tourists around and they are trying to speak Italian, I feel proud that they want to speak Italian. I feel proud that they are trying to learn a few words to survive, at least when ordering food or water. And I've noticed that with languages as well. For example, German, which I find it particularly difficult because either you know the word or you don't. You cannot make it up. While in other languages like Italian, French or Spanish, they are very similar Latin languages. So you are facilitated. But in German, I remember I had multiple experiences in Germany and I always find very helpful people that were supportive, were trying to help me in the streets if I was looking for something or in school or the families that were hosting me. I think every time you approach something, especially a culture that is not yours, with curiosity, you're well received. If anyway, you're opening up. That's the message. Well, in doing that, you're sending a message, hey, I care. I see you. You're important. Even names, your name is spelled C-I-N-S-I-A. And so I assumed it was Cinzia. How do you pronounce your name? It's Cinzia. We practice that. That is so important. My name is Andrea. It's not Andrea. It's not Andrea. It's Andrea. And I know sometimes that's hard, but that's my name. It's curiosity and being willing to work through those kinds of things together that builds trust, that builds connection. Yes, definitely. And there are also very simple tricks that can help you create connections with people like the names, for example. It's a very simple thing, but psychologically, it means you're noticing people. You 
make them feel important. So in the leadership program I run, I always make sure that when I kick off the sessions, I welcome all of the participants. I mention their name and it means that you are specifically focusing and personalizing your welcome to that person. You make them feel important. And it's not done just because I think it's a psychological trick, but it's because I want them to feel that way. I want them to feel important. So you mentioned the questions and the importance of asking awkward questions or being curious. That is something that as a coach, I do all the time because as a coach, you ask a lot of questions. You'd never give answers because it's not problem solving. Coaching is a, an opportunity to help the other person find their own way with the right questions. And I am very curious. I ask a lot of questions. My mom, another story, <laughs> has always told me that I was the classical Y girl from the very young age, right? It's happening this, why mom, why mom, why mom? Even though sometimes I have to say that the why question is something I don't use in coaching because it can scare people. The why brings you back in your rational mind while other questions keeps you in the emotional state, which is where sometimes the epiphany <laughs> comes up more naturally, especially in coaching. Yeah. How and what questions? right? The, the exploratory kinds of questions. So let's talk more about looking at the world through a multicultural lens. You've talked a lot about curiosity, openness, listening, being willing to be awkward and experiment. What else, what other competencies for leaders who are working with a diverse group of team members? What are some other important leadership competencies that you focus on? I think the emotional intelligence piece is particularly important in my activities for team building, leadership development, and coaching. I use the EQI 2.0 model, which is very well structured to help people understand where they are in terms of emotional intelligence, so how they perceive themselves, how they express themselves, how they connect with others, how they solve problems, how they manage stress, how they connect with themselves with others and how they cope with the challenges of the world. And I think emotional intelligence is a competence skill that is very important nowadays because it gives you the opportunity to learn how to interact with others. The emotional intelligence is based on a variety of different skills that I briefly mentioned. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you, as a leader, you need to be at the top of every skill. You just need to know what to use in different circumstances. And emotional intelligence has gained focus over the years from last century when we had Goleman publishing the book on emotional intelligence, but a lot of studies even the years before. I think nowadays being able to use your emotional intelligence to build safe, trusted, and authentic relationships at work and outside of work is fundamental. And the good news is that emotional intelligence can change over time, can grow. It's not like IQ that is fixed after your teenage years, probably more or less is fixed, but EQ, emotional intelligence, can change over time, can even be impacted by big events in your life. So I think that is a skill that is very important for leaders today because it creates this safe space where people feel welcome. They feel able to experiment, which is something you mentioned earlier. Like, for example, I had the opportunity to have leaders in my career. They gave me the chance to experiment, to try new things, to get out of my comfort zone. Not because they asked me to do that. Maybe, yes, they also did that, but because I wanted to in the spirit of being curious, basically. Yeah, that's really good. From an emotional intelligence perspective, there's such an element of self-awareness and being aware of how you're showing up. And I know one of the things you talk a lot about is intentionality and paying attention. And I have to tell you, since our first conversation, Shinzia, there's something that I've been doing. You had mentioned how important it is to be present, even in a virtual setting like this, really focusing on the person that we try to multitask, but people know when we're multitasking or we're doing something else. And so when I do intro calls for this podcast, I always pull up a Word document because I'm taking notes. But I had never told 
my guests, I never told them that I was doing that. So now I say like, hey, my being here with you and listening to you is the most important thing. And I want to capture what you're saying. So if you notice me typing or notice me looking at something else, just know it's because I'm typing notes in a Word document, right? So that intentionality is so important, isn't it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Multitasking is something we have all experience. And let's be honest, it's something I've done myself, especially now when a coach, absolutely, you need to be 100% focused on the person if you have one-on-one -on -one conversation. But even when you listen to events or you participate in roundtables, it's important to be focused on what's happening. And it goes back to be here and now, right? And you are with the other person or whoever is with you in that moment, you're able also to read the room, you to understand what's going on and to switch and change and shift your approach depending on what's the reaction of the other person. Making sure the other person is aware if you're taking notes, I think that's a really good piece of advice for everybody. The other day I was on a call with the person and he told me the exact same thing. He said, I have two screens. I will look not at you, but at the other screen because I take notes on the screen. I personally take notes on a notepad, so I'm still old style and sometimes I look down, but I try to do that and I need to take notes sometimes for my own uh, ability to connect things. And when I coach, I always say, I'm going to take some notes and I even ask if that's okay because not everybody is fully okay with taking notes. I mean, it depends. I am open to all options, but I think, yes, being intentional and making sure you give your undivided attention to the person and it goes back to the, what we were talking about earlier about listening, listening truly, not just hearing. Listening it has a totally different meaning. Even in Italian, we have different words. What is the word? Well, hearing is sentire and listening is ascoltare. So hearing, you hear a noise. Listening is hear something, listen to it, process it, digest it, and being fully present. In all the languages, I think there are differences, but even, you know, in English, you have hear and listen in Italian as well. So yes, there is yes. a reason why we have different, different words. Different words, because the action is different. How many languages do you speak? Well, I'm native Italian. I speak English, French, Spanish, German, and Swedish. And I do coach in Italian, English, French, and Spanish. And I studied for one year Japanese, but it was uh, very tough because I didn't have the chance to speak so often. And, you know, there is all the vocabulary and it's complicated. So do you dream in all those different languages? <laughs> That's a very good question. Sometimes it happens in English because I work only in English. I don't work in Italian. Even though I coach sometimes in Italian, my work every day is just in English or maybe French or Italian, but primarily in English. And it's funny that when I speak to my parents, when I meet them, I'm so used to terms in English and every day, like a meeting, I have a call or whatever, that I use them. And my dad is freaking out because he said, you are Italian, you have to use the Italian words. But there are words that we cannot translate. Take the word resonate. Does this resonate with you? The word resonate, it does not exist in Italian. You have to create a sentence for that concept. So I think the beauty of learning different languages is the fact that you also learn how different cultures think, right? The way English is built is you say things in a much quicker way with fewer words. In Italian, you use many more words to say the same thing, literally. And same with Spanish, with French. So yeah, it's a whole other world learning the connection across different languages. Yeah, how important. Is that the language in looking at the world through a multicultural lens? Well, I definitely think that it can help you connect with people. There are some countries where English is easily used. There are also some countries that appreciate more the fact that you are using their language. But definitely it creates a connection. It shows that you are trying to make an effort to understand them. And even if you aren't fluent, learning the basic phrases and asking the question that you asked earlier, like what's typical of your culture? Being willing to engage in the way you can. I think that's the key I'm taking away from this conversation. Absolutely. Asking, asking, and especially don't make assumption and 
I would also say don't judge. If a person from another culture is not fully aware of what's happening in your own culture and they do something, it's weird in your own culture. I would say the general rule, assume good intention. The person didn't do that because maybe they didn't do an extensive research or for whatever reason, but I would always say assume good intentions in general and don't judge because the person is not greeting you in the right way. Give grace. Everywhere you go, there are people with fears and doubts and stuff in their life and going on. And yeah, so let's not make assumptions about what's happening with anyone. Let's give each other grace. Be kind. She smiled at the world and the world smiled back. I think if you're going into the world with an open heart and an open spirit with love and care and smiling at people, like, there you go. That's the place to start. I absolutely agree. And I also feel that and believe that positive energy brings positivity, optimism, a harmonious, welcoming environment, then you can have your discussions or right. conflicts, but it's in a totally different environment. Exactly. There was a, a situation I'll never forget. I was in the Paris airport many years ago. And I had been in the UK for work and I had gone to Paris for just a little short holiday and my flight was canceled. And I had a baby at home that I was desperate to get home to. And I was just exhausted and tired and sad and don't speak French. So I was not communicating <laughs> the way I wanted to with everyone. So I was sitting on the floor in the airport crying, just feeling so sad. And there was a woman walking towards me and she gave me the most beautiful smile. And we locked eyes and she smiled and we didn't speak a single word, but I felt so much care and concern from her. She looked at me like, I see you and you're going to be okay. <laughs> it was like a warm hug. A smile means a thousand words. You know, sometimes you just need a smile, a hug, or a simply the questions and not maybe trying to fix them because that's not maybe what they want. So, oh, I'm going to do this, this, and this for you. No. Is there a way I can help you? You want me to listen to you? So what's the core message? I think the core message is the fact that regardless of everything around, we are all people from all the cultures, different backgrounds, wherever we are in the world, what we do, where we come from. We can work with anybody if we approach people as human beings. That's the point. That's the key for building meaningful connection with everybody. We are just human beings. And that's a theme. I am taken away listening to you is there is a humility in this multicultural lens because it is showing up focused on what's happening with you. It's so good. Chinzia, thank you so much for all of these incredible takeaways. You have definitely equipped our listeners. You have definitely equipped me to just be more confident about leaning in to the diversity within the team, the looking at life through this multicultural lens, recognizing that we all have stuff that we're walking around with. So let's honor each other. Let's give each other grace. Let's be curious. Let's not make assumptions. Thank you for inviting me. And I would say just remember that we are all human beings. And that's something people I work with in leadership development, they always realize after a few weeks, even if there are so many differences across cultures, we are more similar than we actually think. Thank you for your heart and the work that you're doing. If our listeners want to connect with you, what's the best place to do that? You can easily find me on LinkedIn. Uh, so my name is Cinzia Beretta, based in Italy. So I don't think you'll find many. <laughs> Speaks about diversity, cultural, leadership development, coaching. That's me. That's you. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this episode. Please subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast to never miss a being at work story.